Welcome back everybody, this is Retro Challenge Gamer, and we are going to continue on and actually go into an age, and the first one I'm going to choose is the Mechanical Age. Now, I am not going to read this all to you, I'm going to deliberately spend some time on each page, but if you want to read this story in the background behind the Mechanical Age, then you are more than welcome to pause the video and look at the pages yourself. But I'm going to continue on uh, with this video, but I'm going to go to each page so you have a chance of pausing. So, everybody got all that? Everybody read the book? Okay, good. We're going to continue on. Alright, so first thing is the tower rotation, which is what Atris mentioned to Catherine is the first key to get into these places of protection that he put these remaining books, whatever they are. So we're going to go to that gear because <laughs> that was the most interesting thing about the island so far. And we're going to go head back up the secret passage and see uh, if rotating the tower to a red line does anything specifically special. Now actually, the first age I actually went to was the Selenic Age, I think is how it's called. And that is actually in the spaceship, because I was so enamored with the spaceship when I first played the game. That was the first age I went to. And that was a mistake. <laughs> and that will become pretty evident when I actually do that age. You actually want to do this one first before you get to that one. But yes, the viewport actually shows you where exactly the book is, but that doesn't show you the key to getting it. So you want to go to the key ladder on the back end of the elevator, and you get this. You get what looks like a clock position, 240, and then the numbers 221. By themselves, they don't mean much until you can start pairing them up with potential uh, points of, you know, puzzle interaction, then they start becoming very important. So yeah, you're going to have to do this quite often, going up and down this elevator, uh, trying to get the keys, the knowledge keys to open up the places of protection. But uh, when I first played this game, I actually did it all at once. Like, I, I went up and down the elevator like four times after tower rotating four times for each of the four red lines, and I wrote everything down all at once, and then I tried to start solving the puzzles. But for the essence of time in this video, we're just going to do it for just this age only. So, obviously, since we got a time of 2.40, the obvious place to go would be here. So, we're going to move the hour hand to 2 o'clock, where the minute hand is right now. And one, two, three, four, five, six turns of the minute hand should be 240. And that should be the solution. And sure enough, we get some gears that rise up that perform a uh, path to the clock. And while we're here, we actually might want to flip on this switch here, just in case it does something. Here's a little new device. As you can see, the first the first swig of the device actually moves both both gears, but then after that it's just the middle gear that moves. So what you want is you want to turn it twice individually and then turn it and hold it until the two comes back around. So you get the two, two, one. And then this gear opens up. Now by itself it's nothing special until you can figure out everything on this island is connected. And so if that opened up, then what do you think the big gear did all the way at the beginning? Hmm, let's go find out. <laughs> and sure enough, the small model actually matches the big. And we have a book here. And this book has a totally new place we can go to. And this is actually something I think that was added in the Myst Masterpiece Edition, which is what I'm playing right now. Is this new cinematic that when you click on it, it actually opens up a bigger, more detailed view of it. So let's see. Yeah. Yep. So this is a new edition. This new, bigger graphical movie is actually quite different. This was not in the original release of the game. So I actually like this. I like the, that they added the whole overview of the age 
right before you enter it. So this is the mechanical age, and the first thing you will notice is that there is no book there. You, you're not going to be able to get back to Mist Island easily, so you're stuck here. Uh, that looks like a pretty prominent structure, but let's take a look at this. Oh, this looks like a combination puzzle, and it has a lot of a lot of images, so, I mean, the number of combinations you could probably brute force is, like, thousands of combinations. It's insane, so we're not going to even try guessing. So we're going to have to figure out, naturally, what's, you know, what the combination is. Now, the whole purpose of most of these ages is to look at rooms, look at the living spaces of the two brothers, Cirrus and Akinar. And, if you couldn't tell, this is actually Cirrus's room. And that's a little telescope. And you're trying to get the measure of these men. You're trying to figure out what drives them. What makes them tick. Who do you ultimately trust in this game? Who, do you, who should you trust? Who should you keep bringing back the pages for? And so, there's these, these rooms here that you can actually take a look, interact with, and just figure out the measure of these men. Seems like Cyrus is more refined. He likes good things in life, and he apparently is slightly vain. Because that's apparently a picture of him. He likes intellectual stimulation and games. And if you'd like, you want to sit on his throne and take a look out. It's very pristine. A very pompous, decorated room. We're going to press the obvious red button here, just because. And listen to the annoying buzzing noise. Yes, you go down here, and there's something not right here. It's not lined up. So what your goal here is... Yeah, what your goal here is, is to move the elevator uh, so that ro it's rotated outward. And Oh gosh, I messed that one up. Because before, it was not even rotated in the right direction, so you couldn't even enter the elevator. So you're underneath it, rotating it to the right direction. And there is somewhat of a lag time, so if you let go too early, it could blow right past the red marker you really want, which is what happened initially. And sure enough, we can now enter the elevator. Simple puzzle, ultimately. Okay, you can't obviously go down, it won't let you. And the middle switch does nothing until you come up here. Now for the longest time, I couldn't figure out what to do. Not one bit. Like, you come out of the elevator onto the top floor here, and that's it. That's it. This is it. Nothing. You have nowhere else to go. You're like, okay, what was the point of that? You press this, and it beeps at you. And then it takes you back down. But only when you exit the elevator while it's beeping, do you see something special? Something on top of the elevator. So there's two switches here. And I'm trying to refigure out what each switch does, actually. Okay, and that button, okay, yeah, oops. That button actually brings up the elevator, but... It took forever. I think I was wandering around the Mechanical Age for, oh, I don't know, like an hour or so before figuring out that I needed to exit the elevator while it was beeping. And then I discovered this whole new aspect of the elevator. So I think the left switch unlocks the building, and that will come into play later. And the right switch actually rotates it. And when you feel like you've rotated it long enough, you pull the left switch down to lock it back into place. And you get to hear a sound. Now that sound is very important, both in this age and in another age that we'll come to. But I'll get to more, more on that later. For now, we go downstairs and see exactly what the heck we just did. And while we're at it, we can probably take a look at Akinar's room too and see what he's all about. 
and already the music kind of gives you a, <laughs> an idea. What is this? Oh, a little jack-in-the-box. Oh, that's cute. Oh, dear gosh. <laughs> it's a cobra. Now that is an interesting toy. You got some sort of maces and random stuff strewn across this floor. Swords. A mask that may or may not be real flesh. Who knows? And then you have this. This is what's the most important thing in this age. Not only does it help you figure out the tower rotation or the fortress rotation, it also gives you the sounds you need to figure out where where it's facing and helps you out sound-wise for a different puzzle in a different age. Oh, so you gotta let it go and then lock it in with the left switch and that gets you sort of like a gas engine type of sound. Go forward north and lock it and you get like a little tiny bell sound. And you go westward and lock it. I'm not really sure what that sound is, but like a bird maybe? I don't know. And you get sort of like a, a dumbbell type of sound when it faces south. So right now we know that it's facing east because that's the sound we heard. Okay, he's way into his weapons, that's for sure. He's got chains and stuff strewn all over the place. Very disturbing. So let's take a look outside and see where exactly we... Oh, yep, this is definitely different. We have definitely moved the fortress. And what is this? The second half of the combination we need. So obviously at this point you would be jotting down what these symbols are and what position they're in. And let's see if I can take a look off to the left. Okay, yep, so that's the starting island we were at. So we did physically move this this uh, fortress. So now let's move it again. Um, okay, not this one. Okay, I'm trying to look to see. There's a special little Easter egg in the telescope. It's one of the four positions of the fortress. Okay, so we want to move it to the north side of the of the circle track. And what we're going to be looking for, or listening for rather, is a small high-pitched bell sound. If we hear that, then we know we're on the right track. Okay, you don't have to really keep it rotating for very long. And we did hear the light bell sound, so that we're, we're, we're positive the fortress is now facing north. So now we take the elevator down and go back outside again. In terms of puzzle difficulty of all the ages, I'd have to say the mechanical cage is actually the most simple of ages completely. Uh, and let's see here. Oh, yep, here's the Easter egg. <laughs> it's funny how the telescope was pristinely placed to view that, but only on the northern side. Interesting, that. I wonder if that was intentional by Cirrus. Okay, and there doesn't seem to be an island on the west side of the fortress, so there's no reason to rotate the fortress to that end. So the next, okay, the first half of the puzzle. You need to jot that down, so now you have all four pieces of the puzzle. You can solve the combination at the very beginning of this age. So yeah, as I was saying, I mean, the puzzles, the puzzles in this uh, age are pretty, pretty simple. This Linux gauge is a little bit difficult, especially the last part if you haven't heard the noises of north, east, west, and south in this age. And uh, what is it, the Stone Ship Age and the Channelwood Age? Those have a little harder puzzles to figure out. But this one I was able to do all by myself when I was younger, when I first played this game, and I didn't really need any outside help to figure it out. In the end, it just—it was just intuitive. The puzzles were fairly simple to figure out. 
once you realized, you know, the, the logic behind them. Okay, so we want to hear the dumbbell sound. I don't want to overshoot it, because it's very sensitive on how fast it spins. Okay, that means it's on the west end. It's facing west, and we want it to face south. Back to the start. Okay, that's the sound we wanted to hear, the little dumbbell sound. And now we head back out, and we are going to enter our combination and see if that actually is correct. Although there's no reason why it wouldn't be. It's on the other two podiums, so... think of it, of all the ages, this is probably the simplest one of the four. I mean, you can't get much simpler than this. And voila! Just like that, you have, uh, basically... Give it, got your exit out of the stage back to Mist Island, but is that the whole purpose? I mean, we didn't just come here just to go back to Mist Island, we need to come back with something. There has to be something that demonstrates that we have been here before, Something, some sort of memento we can take back. So let's take another look at the brothers' rooms and see if there's something that might have been hidden there. Something that we might have overlooked. So, you want to take a look at this room very carefully. Hmm, that yellow line looks suspicious. When you click on it, a secret door! Ooh, hidden rooms. What is this? Yeah. There's a, looks like a human head in here. Now, why would he keep that? This looks like a whole bunch of poisons in an apothecary, and up oh, here's a blue page we can take back with us. And this is a jail that is not doing what it should. <laughs> okay, what it should have done is it should have lit up the room so that it was electrified. So electrified jail. And then of course a bloody hatchet on a chopping block. Something was not really right in the head for Akinar. He seems a little bit sadistic. Like he likes torture. Hmm, that's already a black mark against him. Do we really want to be taking this page back? Well, in the long grand scheme of things, it's not going to hurt us. Because he needs more than just two pages to fulfill him and uh, get him out of that book. So we're in no danger yet. So let's uh, hear a little bit more of his side. Okay, there's two things you could glean from that. For one, <laughs> he's still not right in the head, but uh, he said retribution at the end, which means he's very much focused on revenge. And so releasing him could bring about something you may not be able to undo. 
And the second thing is that he knows about the red pages, which means before he got stuck in that blue book, he must have known about the red book. And I'm assuming it's a similar situation with Cirrus, is that before he got stuck in the red book, he knew about the blue book. So both brothers, before getting stuck, knew about each other's books. That is a very important piece of information to know. But now we're going back to see if we can find the red page in Cirrus's room. Again, you look at the throne. And this one's a little harder to spot, because there's no line. It's hidden behind the tapestry here, which is very, very tricky. And, well... Hmm... It looks like Cirrus has a love for money. And a lot of it. it. Looks like he's a drunkard, too. Look at all this. Oh, and what is this? Subjects? What are they, kings and gods? What are they trying to play at here? It almost seems like they fashion themselves as gods, because they, uh, they feel it necessary to have subjects, to have people who follow them, and then tax them for all things. So, hmm. So we know that Cirrus might be potentially an alcoholic, and he has an insatiable lust for wealth and power, and probably considers himself like a god to lesser peons. Hmm. So far, neither brother is looking very appealing. But we'll continue to oblige each of them and see what each one has to say. So let's see if uh, Cirrus can give us any more details on the matter. Well, we didn't learn too much from Cirrus this time. Uh, we do know that he does have some anger issues. He's almost like he's commanding you to do something, bring the red pages to him. So that's a little disturbing. But we're going to select another age in the next video and explore that one as well. Until then, see you later.